Well, everyone, welcome to Woodlawn Christian Church. It is my distinct pleasure to once again get to interview uh, the Harp Twins, Camille and Kennerly Kitt. So today we want to ask them a few questions. Last year we asked them some questions, and we have, uh, I think, twice as many questions actually this year as last. Wow. Or close to. Um, so let's jump right in with the questions for the Harp Twins. Um, I know that we asked you all this last year, but please tell those who may have missed that interview, how old were you when you started playing harps? And also, what in particular drew you to the harp? Oh, oh well, good. that's always a great question. Well, we, we first saw a harp up close and in person when we were about 11, uh, about 11 years old. We had a friend whose mom played the harp and, and she let us try her harp. Um, she thought, oh yeah, maybe they'd want to try my harp. And, and we just, we were enamored with the instrument when we got to try it. So we told our mom that we wanted to play and she said, you know, no, I don't have the money to buy you a harp. Um, so, but we, we so badly wanted to play. So we started doing lots of odd jobs. We did babysitting and dog walking and we did collating at a local print shop which is probably not legal at our age with all that but... heavy machinery <laughs> but we eventually earned enough money for one small used harp that we shared and then we took friends we took lesson from our friend's mom and then I think our mom eventually realized that we were serious and we uh, helped us get a second harp it was another small used harp mm -hmm. and uh, we went from there so I think it was one of those things where I don't know if you can really describe what draws you to an instrument always it's mm -hmm. just something about that in instrument really it spoke to us called to our spirits i yeah. guess that is that is wonderful spirits a uh, spirit speaking um <laughs> number two question how many harps do you have or have you had and which are or were your favorites to play Ah, well, we have acoustic concert ground harps, mm -hmm. uh, which are the big ones. We have, like you would see in the back of an orchestra or something like that. And then we have two electroacoustic concert ground harps, like, well, one each. Um, <laughs> and then we have electric harps that we strap onto our bodies and, and they're fully electric. So they have to be amplified to get kind of a, a you know, the harp natural sound. And then we have, uh, we have a couple of smaller harps or smallest harps. They're made by a company in Indiana called Harpsicle Harps. And and those are, uh, we don't use for performing, but we use them for uh, therapy work. And we've uh, actually used them for uh, several music videos and things like that. Yeah, but so. they're great for like kids that have special needs um, because they're very lightweight and light tension. So I think they're our favorites to play. Well, the ones that we perform on uh, right now uh, for our live shows are our electroacoustic concert ground harps. And those are nice because we can amplify them more easily than our acoustic harps because you can plug them into a sound system and then you can have even sound for an entire venue, no matter what the size of the venue is. And then we also love our smaller electric harps. They're easier to transport. And to so it's kind of, it's, it's, we can fly with them and things like that. For our full shows, we use, uh, we usually play the first half with our big harps or concert grounds and the second half with our electric harps. Um, it's, it's kind of a fun uh, dual dual show there. And so. then we did have a set of um, kind of large lever harps, not as big as our concert grounds, but our first harps that we ended up uh, selling uh, to get some money to go toward when we got concert grand harps. So yeah, we don't so have those Those anymore. were, those were uh, different harps that so they were um, because we got them both used. So they were different colors, the same, same type of heart but mm -hmm. uh, made different years and they were different uh different colors so and one of the things i love about you is that you do the things with the special needs with your little little harpsicle harps that is so wonderful you're such a blessing to people um you. the third question is playing off of that do you ever miss your first harps and have you ever wished you still had them Oh. We do. I think uh, yeah. we do miss those first harps. I wish we did still have them, but I hope wherever they are, they're being, you know, loved and, and, and played. Someone's, uh, someone's enjoying them. Because and... it's most important that instruments are played. So hopefully wherever they are, so, some kid or something is playing them and loving them. So we do miss them, but we, you know, it, it was it's okay that we needed to give them up because it was to move on um, with our own studies. And we wanted to study classical music at a university level. And in order to do, to do that, that, we needed concert grand harps. <laughs> So we ended up selling those to to help pay for our concert grounds. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> that, that's sad, but it's a blessing to someone else. Exactly. Um, <laughs> all right. And what other instruments do you play or are you currently learning to play? And what drew you to those instruments? 
Oh. Ah, well, well, we uh, we were trained. We were also trained classically in piano. We actually have it. We didn't uh, couldn't afford a piano as kids, but we have touch sensitive keyboard. Mm-hmm. And and our mom knew that uh, playing playing an instrument was really good for uh, for us as kids uh, with the, just with school and with developing our minds. And so she had us in piano lessons. Yeah, so we're quite proficient in that. In fact, we uh, validated out of our conservatory requirements because everyone has to be very proficient in piano. Mm-hmm. Um, no matter what instrument they play. So we played that, we took lessons through high school. And then by the time we got to our university where we were going to be studying harp performance, we uh, were able to validate out of our piano studies. And we did love piano, but it was not, it was, wasn't was like really a true passion for us, like, like our harp was. Mm-hmm. And, and then we also sing, we sang in our collegiate choirs and we sing quite a lot. Um, we love to write lyrics. So we sing in almost all of our original songs. We'll be singing at this Christmas concert yes. uh, with quite a few different, uh, different tracks. And then but, we also can play a little bit of Tagalarpa, which is like an ancient bowed lyre. But we're not we're not great at that. Instrument. No, we're not. That is definitely not. We're not <laughs> professional Tagalarpa players. Yes. But, um, but we do uh, we do love kind of uh, some of those uh, ancient instruments. They have a, a very earthy sound that you really don't get with uh, our modernized instruments these mm-hmm. days. Kind of perfected instruments. Yeah. <laughs> You should say you're not professionals yet. So <laughs> there you go. You well, never, know. never know. <laughs> Though you did play them in one of your videos. We did. Uh, yeah, that was yes. fun. Uh, for those who attended last year's concert, what can they expect to be different from that performance, which, by the way, was absolutely amazing? Thank, oh, thank you. you. Well, we love to change up uh, our concerts each season. Last year was, I think, our very first kind of actual Christmas tour where mm-hmm. we played uh, multiple concerts with full, uh, you know, our full Christmas show. Yeah, before and... that, we had done quite a few, you know, kind of background events with Christmas music or partial concerts opening up for some other sh- Christmas concerts. But, but that was our first uh, Christmas tour, which, which was really fun. fun and special so we're really looking forward to uh expanding it this year as well and we're going to be revamping the show you know we've got some new christmas songs that some we're going to play arrangements new that arrangements. we're excited about we've got uh some ancient carols uh, some uh cr- classic christmas songs and then we're going to include also uh, a spattering of uh, even classic rock songs that we feel like fit with the mood of this concert and i think there'll be a little something for everyone because I think so. uh, a lot of times with our concerts you you know, it's it's this concert's being held at a church, but I'm sure there'll be many people there that uh, have never been to a church or mm-hmm. would it normally um, be at once. So I so think I think that our concert will be a good bridge between maybe people who are regularly attending church and then people who never have set foot in a church and a little bit of something musically for everyone. Hopefully, as well, we but have it'll be it'll be stories and stories. It'll be highly Christmas oriented. We have some surprises up our sleeves. Yes, so. we can't say too much <laughs> quite yet. We're excited. <laughs> Well, we were honored to be your first stop on that Christmas tour last year, too. And if it was your first Christmas tour, what a blessing for us. Um, And you've alluded to a little bit what the next question is. When you are planning your set list for an event, how do you go about selecting your music and why? And how have you gone about selecting your set list for this year's concert? Ah, that's a great, great question. So we play for a lot of different types of events, everything mm-hmm. from Renaissance and Celtic fairs to Comic Cons to full concerts at opera houses and theaters. So and sometimes if we're playing uh, for something like a, say, a Comic Con, we might include more pop culture things and movie themes and things like that. And if we're doing a, one of our own full concerts, we tend to do a big variety. We do a lot of original music of ours, but we also do classic rock and we might throw a few uh, ancient Celtic songs in there. But we really, uh, I think for this Christmas tour, obviously it's going to be heavily weighted toward Christmas and even winter music. We have written some original Christmas songs ourselves and then things that are uh, heavily inspired by our own Norwegian heritage and some of that lore and things around Yule time and Christmas time. Yeah. So uh, I think we, we and, 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 and things have changed over the years with how we pick out songs. I think our show has really it's evolved a lot. Evolved it, a lot mm-hmm. and, and and grown. And so we include a lot of stories and little kind of uh, comedic bits and and sibling banter and things like that. So yeah, and as far as uh, our Christmas show goes, you know, obviously a lot of Christmas music, but there'll be a little bit of something for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I did mention before we started recording that I was in Elkhorn and Kimbleton, Iowa mm-hmm. this last weekend, dropping off flyers, and they were excited that you uh, were coming because they are very Scandinavian. They're, they're, that's a Danish 
part of the world. So uh, oh. they were excited when I told them you were all Scandinavian. Oh, uh, that's uh, her Scandinavian heritage, we should say. Yeah, a lot of our, our original songs are, are kind of based off of a lot of the myths and legends of uh, of those parts of the world. And mm-hmm. so uh, we'll definitely include some of that in this uh, this Christmas concert yeah. as well. Maybe we'll have some other Scandinavian heritage uh, cousins there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will. Um, all right. We asked you this last year and you answered so well. Please tell us again, how has your music and performing shaped your lives and especially shaped your faith lives as Christians? Ah, yeah, it's it's a great question. And I would say our music hasn't influenced our faith as much as our faith has influenced our music and our Um, careers in that way. mm -hmm. Because uh, obviously, when as as performers and and, and as we're touring, it's part of uh, part of who we are and the way that we live our lives. And so I think that uh, the way that we conduct ourselves the the choices that we make and the way that we treat other people including when we're on tour and when we're performing that's heavily influenced by our own personal convictions and our own faith um the way that we treat treat other people is with respect and and dignity and mm-hmm. honesty and so and and our personal convictions and and it just uh, plays a large part into our daily lives in general. Um, and I think that people, they, they, they're always watching what others are acting like. And especially if you're more in the public eye, obviously people, you're under a little bit more of a microscope than maybe if you're just, um, you know, kind of living a, a, a more private life, I guess. But I think that the way that we live our lives is is different than maybe a lot of touring musicians and and even the things that were offered on tour, you know, were, uh, is, is oftentimes not something that we, is, is part of our personal, uh, personal conviction, like if we're offered drugs or alcohol, which we are you know, often are at events. It's not something that that's part of who we are, and so we can we can politely turn down those things and uh, hopefully influence people in a positive way. That I think the way that you live is the best example mm-hmm. uh, of and your own personal faith. The way that you treat other people, the way that you love other people, uh, and I think that that's the best uh, the best possible witness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, bless you for being such a positive witness to so many. We, uh, that is appreciated. Um, and another question from last year, which you also answered so very well, since you have recorded a number of religious songs and done several videos of religious music, do you ever look at your music and performing as a form of ministry? Ah, uh, it's a great question. Uh, we do love playing hymns, and yeah. uh, we've even done some since last year. We did How Great Thou Art, which we uh, we which actually filmed uh, that music video in Alaska because mm-hmm. we, you know, we thought what better um, way to display God's creation than somewhere as magnificent as Alaska, as glorious, yeah, mm-hmm. as there. And so I think that, uh, and, and it's interesting because we we did this Heart Reflection album, Heart Reflections album last year, and it harkened back to a lot of our original music that we played because we we used we when we first started off playing uh one of the one of the few places that would bring us in were local churches mm-hmm. and we would play uh during uh during communion or for prelude and things like that and so we we've played so many hymns throughout mm-hmm. time and but, we, you know i think anyone can play a hymn or a song kind of with a religious meaning or background and many do that perhaps are even aren't religious themselves which is a great witness but i think even better is just the way that you live you live your life because you know no one's going to um uh necessarily take just what you uh what you play and the music you play but they're going to watch your lives and who you are so so we do hope that that those uh those hymns that we play are uh, you know many christmas songs of course are an inspiration and a light to people but i think mm-hmm. even more so is the way that we conduct ourselves and the music that we play but uh but we do love playing hymns and i'm sure mm-hmm. we'll be playing more in the future and singing too yes, we like singing, singing them yeah. as well <laughs> you you have many beautiful videos out there of, of hymns and i and i bless you for that um since you're on the road so much and lugging around those heavy harps and merchandise do you have a fitness routine outside of lugging around harps and merchandise and how is that different when you are on the road or at home and gail came up with that question just so you know so, uh, <laughs> well thanks thanks, thanks for that gail. One, gail that is fun and people ask that a lot because they see us um hauling around and you know for every event we play we're bringing all this equipment and harps and merch in yeah. and out and we also kind of are our own roadies so um there's there's a lot of 
physical work that goes into shows. But um, I mean, yeah, I guess playing a harp and looping a harp is a workout in and of itself. And, and it's very different when we're touring and then when we're at home. So when we're at home, we do like to stay active as well. We don't necessarily have a really hardcore workout routine, but we have some we just like to stay at home machines and we stay active. We love to walk and hike. And that even goes for when we're traveling. If we can, we like to get out and, and see some beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful places in God's creation all around the country. So, so I guess we don't specifically have like routines. We enjoy working out, but we also enjoy just spending time in nature and just staying generally active is yeah. fun for us. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised traveling with the Wolfgang twins that you don't have a barbell set up on the top of that van or something like that. I don't know if we would be using the barbell set anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was funny. We were playing at a Comic-Con this past weekend and there was a, uh, a bodybuilding like co competition going on at the same time. So in the was, same conference center. So yes. it was the Comic Con and then the bodybuilders. So yeah, yeah, it's probably a busy gym at our hotel, but we didn't, we, we didn't, we were not there personally. <laughs> that sounds like an interesting combination, to be honest. That, that was, that was a most unusual combination. We haven't seen that before. <laughs> All right. Um, last year, we asked you about special memories of Christmas and Christmas time. This year, can you share any additional Christmas memories from your childhood? Yeah, we have uh, we have so many. We've always loved Christmas. It's always been our favorite time of year. Just and the time spent with family and, you know, um, celebrating Christ's birth, we're obviously. Trying, we're trying to think of some that we didn't uh, didn't say, of course, being with family. We uh, we always used to go over to our grandmas when we were kids. Mm -hmm. um, and but one of our uh, we, were, we were thinking about that recently and, and discussing that. And actually, um, we went to a I don't know if you're familiar with Rebecca St. James, but um, she's kind of like a Christian contemporary artist, or she had a lot of things back uh, back in the earlier 2000s. Yeah, so when we were kids, we loved Rebecca St. James. And so we went to one of her concerts uh, around Christmas time. And uh, right. I think about eight years old. And, yeah. and she was promoting the Compassion Project where you sponsor children overseas. And so and there was a table out in the lobby that had a bunch of, uh, it was a compassion table, and they had a bunch of photos and little pamphlets for different children in different areas the world that needed sponsorship. So we both picked a, a girl from Ethiopia that was actually our age and eight, eight um, years around old, eight too. years mm -hmm. old. And at this at this concert around Christmas time, and we and, and our, our mom. Well, obviously we weren't making enough money to sponsor them ourselves, but our mom helped us sponsor, and then we would do little jobs. And and then when we got on, when we got older and we had jobs ourselves, we were actually able to fully sponsor the girls. We kept them all the way till they graduated from the project, and we've had many since then that we've we have a couple right now, um, but also from Ethiopia. Ethiopia. But it's really cool. We heard from uh, one of the girls. So now she's grown up and she's married. And um, but we got contacted by her um, through Facebook, and she somehow found us and um, sent us pictures of her own kids. And uh, it was just really special to see. So that was kind of a, I guess it started at Christmas time, but it's continued on, yeah. uh, you know, for years and years, for our whole that, lives, our whole lives, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is a that is a wonderful story, um, and thank you for blessing so many that way. Um, another question from Gail. Gail wants to know who cares for your cat Grayling when you are on the road, and do you currently have any other pets? Um, yeah, well, Grayling is an only cat, so we do not currently have any other any other pets. Um, he enjoys being an only cat. He is always well cared for. We have family that take care of him when we're traveling. We, uh, there is a rumor that he watches golf with our brother mm -hmm. um, when we're gone. Which uh, is, and by rumor, she means our brother told he did us that. Us that uh, so you know, I'm not sure about the accuracy, but uh, but yeah, you know, he's he's very spoiled. He gets to stay at home and rule the rule Harptopia. Yeah, mm -hmm. he does. But he is he's an only only pet child yeah <laughs> all right how many pets have you had through the years and have you always had a cat in your lives Oh, very ah. good. Is this also a Gail question? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Gail, Gail has a lot, lots of fun questions. Yes. This is a blast. Um, so uh, let's see. Well, we had uh, a cat all growing up from when we were kids. Um, um, we've only had two cats. We had one cat. She was for 16 years, our, mm -hmm. our first our first cat. She was an all black cat. She so was, we've pretty much had her our whole lives. And, and then, then we had Grayling. Mm -hmm. uh, we got him a few months after she passed away. Mm -hmm. and we had, a, we had a, a, a beautiful German shepherd. He was an old, an old dog at the time was he was a retired service animal that so we 
that we took in. Yeah. So we adopted him. We were his, uh, his kind of senior living facility, I guess. So he was a and, great, great dog. And, and we've uh, always, we had a lot of fish growing up, like tropical fish. So we would fresh take, water, take care fish. of aquariums and stuff. Yeah. And then we had gerbils when we were, when we were mm -hmm. children, I was, we always loved gerbils. So. And you have fish now, don't you? Uh, not, not anymore. anymore. We, oh. we, we tour yeah. so much that we adopted those um, to some uh, some some nice homes. Don't but... worry, they were not flush. They were uh, not. <laughs> we, were down, we were down to the last few in our big aquarium, and so we took them to a um, a, a fish a, a fish only uh, pet store, and so they rehomed them to so other some, people. some nice homes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we 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 just uh, we started touring so much of the year that it was difficult to keep up with those aquariums. But we we had those for most of our lives. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Aquariums are labor intensive. We've they been, are yes. so fun, so mm -hmm. fun. Though. No, they are cool, but yes, labor intensive. Um, is there a reason why you position your harps as you do, since traditionally harpists have the side of their harps presented to the audience? Ah, oh, well, I guess we position our harps a little bit differently than maybe most harpists, uh, just because we're playing together. So I, I've seen other duos and they face their harps toward each other so they can see each other straight on. But then one is one person's hidden from the audience and also the sound is not going directly toward the audience. So one so, of the reasons we like to face our harps toward the audience is that's the way that the soundboard best carries the sound acoustically. So even though um we are, our harps are also, we can amplify them with our, our plug we also like to get that acoustic sound as uh, as amplified as possible for the audience, and that best projects outward from the soundboard if the harp's straight and out. And then it's kind of when we're next to each other, we can see each other if we look toward the side. So I guess it's so and we, can, we can see the audience. We can see the nice. audience, we can see each other, and the sound is going Because we have forward. a lot of interactions with each other and mm -hmm. with the audience. We talk a lot to the audience and tell stories and, um, you know, how well, they banter between joke us. around. And so I think that that just, just works best for us mm -hmm. and for the way that we have our our own concerts and shows yes that all makes sense and i never thought about that but the soundboard definitely facing the audience would make a difference that that mm -hmm. that, that i hadn't thought about that um let's see tell us about how you have been ambassadors for the united states at international conferences and other gatherings how did you get involved with that aspect of harping Oh. So those, uh, when we represented the United States at World Harp Festivals, those have all been ones where they approached us and asked us to uh, come in and perform for those events. The first so, time, I believe, was 2016. It was 2014. 2014. Think, oh, 2014. We were invited by the U.S. Embassy in Paraguay to uh, represent the U.S. at the World Harp Festival down in Paraguay. And then we went back in 2016. And then we also performed twice in uh, Colombia in South America for the World Harp Festival there. I think that was last year and then two years prior, I think, or something like that. So it wasn't last year, it was two years ago, right? 2020? 20, no, I don't know. 2020, nothing happened in 2020. Oh, that's right. Well, okay. <laughs> the years confuse us, but um, but yeah, so we've gotten quite a few opportunities to do that, which has been great. And um, in some instances, we were able to go other areas in the country and kind of do outreaches for uh, people in more rural areas. Yeah, in so Paraguay, we played for quite a few schools, mm -hmm. uh, which was really fun and cultural centers. So we got and, to play for, uh, for a lot of students and, and a lot of kids. And things are a little bit different in Paraguay. So we were able to uh, kind of speak to women and girls because um, the, the embassy created this kind of uh, girls rock type of uh, theme. theme in order to kind of empower and inspire young women there to maybe go outside of things that they might be encur more encouraged to do and kind of uh, perform and do uh, things uh, they wouldn't think of it a little being a female down yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Well, that is, that's very impressive that you were selected for all those things. Oh, um, and another Gail question. Gail wants to know where did the saying harping on someone come from and how do you feel about that phrase? Oh my goodness. Well, Gail, I guess, okay, I do not know. So that is something we should look up. I, I, I have no idea where harping on someone came from, but it, you know, I feel like it doesn't make a lot of sense because uh, who doesn't like love the harp? And so, I mean, I would think that harping, harping on someone would be a little more positive. It has a little bit, it has a negative connotation, which yeah. you know, doesn't seem very fair. I guess it's like saying something is sick when it, and that means it's cool. Uh, so I, I, you know, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit 
bit of an oxymoron there. Uh, you know, I actually don't know, but now I'm kind of curious because it's something that people joke about a lot. Like, oh, did you harp on that person? And yeah, so I don't know where it came. We will have to research that, I guess. You you need to start a movement to change the lexicon in the U.S. Right. So we, right, it becomes a that. positive thing and All no right. longer a negative thing. So, <laughs> um, And finally, what are you looking forward to the most about returning to Woodlawn Christian Church and lovely little Lake City, Iowa? Ah. We're so excited to come back. I think for us, the best thing about being there was the incredibly warm welcome we received from the people at Woodlawn Christian Church and then the people also from the uh, Lake City. Um, it was such a, to the concert. It was such a fun event. We got to meet so many different people. So I guess we're hoping to see a lot of familiar faces and, and then new faces as well. Mm -hmm. So we hope that uh, people that enjoyed our concert last year will come back and bring friends and family. And uh, mm -hmm. we're really looking forward to seeing all of you guys guys again and, and i was gonna faces. say we're looking forward to the lake but then yeah, i remember there know. was no lakes <laughs> <laughs> now we have everything but the lake so right. well we are very much looking forward to hosting you all again and we are very excited to have you on december 10th of this year so if folks are interested in coming i, I will post below a link to the uh, event right um a place where you can purchase tics, tickets online and we would love to have you all here along with Camille and Kennerly, of course. So, well, thank you, twins, so very much for blessing us today with this interview, and have a wonderful, blessed day, and please be a blessing to someone today. Thank, thank you, Pastor. All right.